Good morning. My name is Jill Gill. I live in District 17, and I'm representing myself. And I'm here to urge you to vote yes on HB2. I'm a professor of American history and want to speak to you from the perspective of a historian who specializes in both civil rights and religious history and who hears history repeating itself. I've read the hundreds of letters that Senator Frank Church received from the constituents in 1963 and 64 on the federal civil rights bill that focused on ending racial discrimination in public accommodations and employment, the same issues uh, that we're dealing with in HB2. At one point, Frank Church said the letters were, one, were running 10 to 1 against the civil rights bill in Idaho. The huge volume of letters he received showed that Idahoans who spoke up were overwhelmingly against passing that bill. And the negative argument sounded very similar to what we've heard over the last three days from people urging a no vote on HB2. These appeals included um, appeals against government intrusion, fears that the liberties of businessmen to hire and fire at will would be lost, fears of frivolous lawsuits, fears that whites would have to encounter black people in private spaces, and some added a dose of religious justification about preserving God's natural order. Those letters are kind of embarrassing to read today. We've learned 50 years later that sometimes it does take a federal or state law to ensure protection of minorities, whether they be black Idahoans, Mormon Idahoans, or LGBT ones. The business community has learned that diversity is good for business and discrimination thwarts it. Frivolous lawsuits did not arise from past legislation and old religious supports for racial separation have now been repudiated officially across Christendom. We can be proud as Idahoans that Senator Frank Church and Len Jordan, a Democrat and a Republican, as well as Representative Compton White Jr. and Ralph Harding ignored those negative letters and voted 100% in favor of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. They represented Idaho well. They put Idaho on the right side of history. And I hope you all here will be equally foresightful and courageous. I hope you are also listening to the youth, the students that I see every day in my classes from all faiths and backgrounds who see LGBT rights as the next unfolding of the civil rights movement and as part of the American Revolution in their lifetimes. Thank you. Are there questions? Thank you.